So analyzing the runtime of merge sort is our first kind of fun uh, chance to uh, look at an algorithm. Maybe not our first, but a fun chance to look at an algorithm that actually has a logarithmic component to its runtime. Um, and so here's the way to think about this. Essentially, we know that merges are on. So we can analyze merge and we can see when we look at the merge code and when we just think about how it operates that merging two arrays of size n is O2n basically, right? Because it's in the size of the combined array. I have to look, I have to do two n swaps, right? Or put another way, if the size of the output array is n, then merge is on, right? Because I have to do n comparisons between the items at the front of the smaller arrays. Now let's think about how this works with merge sort with an array of size eight. Because what we really need to figure out is how many merges do we end up doing and what are the size of the merges, right? Because the merge, this is a case where we're not just care about on, we also do care a little bit, a little bit about what n is. Um, all right, so our first merge, so I'm gonna split the problem down and I'm gonna take my array of size eight into two arrays of size four, into four arrays of size two, into eight arrays of size one. So my first merge is eight arrays of size one into four arrays of size two. So one way to think about it is the combined, uh, the eight arrays of size one, four arrays of size two, I'm doing four, um, I'm doing four, is it four? Yes, I'm doing, uh, I'm doing four merges and the output arrays are size two. So this step is O n where n is eight, right? What about my second merge? So now I'm taking four arrays of size two into two arrays of size four. So I'm doing two merges, I, each merge merges a pair of arrays, two merges that take, um, that takes arrays of size uh, two into arrays of size four. So two merges where n is four, the output size is four. So that's also O n where n is eight, okay? So merge one was eight, merge two was eight. The array is size eight. Uh, and now I've got my final merge. So now I've got two arrays of size four that I need to combine into one array of size eight. That's one merge where n is eight. And so what you'll see is that at every level, um, the, it's O n in the size of the total array. When I start off, I'm doing more merges, but on smaller arrays. And as the arrays get bigger and bigger, my sorted arrays get bigger and bigger, I'm doing fewer merges on larger arrays. But it turns out that the total time complexity at each level is the same. So four merges where n is two is the same as one merge uh, where the output size is eight, right? Um, okay. so. The question for merge sort runtime then becomes, how many levels do I have to do? Um, and uh, you know, one way to think about this, or one way I like thinking about it, is that um, think about how large the sorted arrays are. So the first merge produces sorted arrays of size two, right? There might be more than one of them if I'm doing a larger problem, but every sorted array is size two. The next merge produces sorted arrays of size four. The next merge produces sorted arrays of size eight. The next merge produces sorted arrays of size 16. And so the size of my sorted array is doubling at every step. Now at some point, that's gonna get big enough that it's gonna be as large or larger than the size of the array I started with. So again, with this problem, I started with an array of size eight. I start with uh, I, my first merge produces sorted arrays of size two, and then four, then eight, and I'm done. So the question is, how many doublings does it take to get to a certain value? And that turns out to be log n, log base two of n. So in this case, n is eight, log base two of eight is three. I've got to do three sets of merges. Each merge is O n. So that's where it's n log n, where it's log base two, because every merge produces an output array that's twice as large. And it's that log n factor that really makes merge sort quite nice because log n grows very slowly as n gets big. So you know, we can go back and look at those curves again for our different complexity categories, but n squared and n log n are very different as n gets big. And so you might think, ah, no, no biggie, right? Who cares? It's still n something, right? It's not like it's O n, um, but O log n grows a lot more slowly than O n squared. So it's a big improvement in terms of our runtime. Um, so here's another way of looking at it sort of visually, right? Is, you know, I start with my unsorted array, um, eight unsorted arrays of size one. Now I've got four sorted arrays, sorry, eight sorted arrays of size one, because the array of size one is sorted. Now I've got four sorted arrays of size two, two sorted arrays of size four, and one sorted array of size eight. And so no matter how big the array is, I can produce a similar tree 
And what you're going to find is the depth of this diagram is n uh, log base 2 of n, right? Where n is the number of items in the array. Now, it's not quite perfect because I have like 11 items or 17 or something that's not quite a power of 2. But if you think about the powers of 2, so it's like how many merges would it take to create an array, a sorted array of size 16? 4. What about 32? 5. What about 10, 24? 10, right? Um, because uh, 2 to the 10th is 10, 24. And so log base 2 of 10, 24 is 10. Um, so the number of merges I have to do is growing very slowly. Now, the merge complexity is always the same. It's always ON in the size of the total array. But what's growing more slowly here is the number of steps that it takes to produce, to start with sorted, starting with sorted arrays of size 1 to produce this much larger sorted array. All right, so I like to think of it from the bottom. So I start with sort of arrays of size 1, and then 2, and then 4, and then 8, and 16, and it's doubling in every step. And so at a certain point, that gets big enough that the sorted array that we created is bigger than the array we started with, and then that's when we're done.